Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at simplifying algebraic fractions. So there's two key things that you need to do. The first thing you need to do is factorize anything that you can factorize. And then the second thing that you're going to look to do is cancel whatever you can cancel. Now, the thing with cancelling is that often pupils are unsure about when you can cancel and when you can't cancel. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about cancelling. Um, let's strip it right back to a real simple example. Let's say you start off with the number 10 and you add 3 to it and of course you get 13 and then you subtract 3 and of course you end up with 10, back at 10. The process of adding 3 and taking away 3 cancels itself out because subtraction cancels out addition and if you're adding on the same amount and then subtracting by the same amount the process cancels itself out and you're just left with what you started with 10. Let's take for example say you had 10 multiply by 3 and then you were going to divide by 3 and again 10 times 3 is 30 divide by 3 you'd be left with of course 10 because you're multiplying by three, but then dividing by three, the division cancels out the multiplication. So what we're left with again is just 10. So canceling happens when you have maybe an add three, then a subtract three cancels that out. If you have a multiply by three, then a divide by three cancels that out. So multiplication cancels out division and addition cancels out subtraction and vice versa, as long as, long as you have, of course, the same amount each time. So of course, when we're dealing with fractions, we are dealing with division. Okay, so the key thing here is that if you're dealing with division and looking to cancel things out underneath the division line, then you must make sure that whatever it is you're cancelling has been multiplied because division will only cancel out multiplication. So say you had 10 uh, multiplied by x and then divide by x or maybe written like this 10x divided by x. Since the x is being multiplied to the 10 on top and then we're dividing by the x, those x's would cancel to be left with 10. However, if you had 10 plus x on the top and then your division line and an x on the bottom, you could not cancel out these x's that would not work because that x is being added and division does not cancel out addition. Division will only cancel out multiplication like it is up here, but division cannot cancel out an addition of an x. So that's a very key point to remember when you're trying to figure out if something can cancel or not. Ask yourself the question, is it multiplied to everything? on the top and is it multiplied to everything on the bottom okay keep reminding yourself of that because if it's not being multiplied to everything on the top and it's not being multiplied to everything on the bottom then that division line will not be able to cancel it out okay let's take a look at some examples here to see whether we can cancel or not so here we have five multiplied by x plus 1 on the top and then the division line and we have 5x on the bottom. So the question is, can we cancel out the 5s like this? And the answer is, of course, yes, because the 5 has been multiplied to everything in the brackets on the top and the 5 has been multiplied to everything on the bottom, the other x. So yes, that works. We can cancel that. Next one. The question is, can we cancel the x's here. Now that x has been multiplied to the 2 on top and that x has been multiplied to x plus 1 on top. So the x has been multiplied to everything on the top. But when we look at the x on the bottom, the x has been added to the 1 on the bottom. So no, I cannot cancel out those x's. Now there is something else we could look at here though. If we look at 
x plus 1 in the brackets in its entirety, the question is, can we cancel this x plus 1 on the top with this x plus 1 in total on the bottom? Now, this x plus 1 on the top is being multiplied to the 2x on the top. But is this x plus 1 in its entirety being multiplied on the bottom? Now, technically, you could say it is being multiplied by 1. So because we're multiplying, we're can't, looking to cancel the whole thing, then yes, that is okay to do because this x plus 1 is technically being multiplied to the 2x on the top and this x plus 1 it's in, in its entirety is technically being multiplied to a 1 on the bottom. So that is okay. Looking over here, could we cancel that x with that x? So can I do this? The answer is no. And the reason I can't do that is although this x has been multiplied to the everything on the top, the other 2x minus 1, it's been multiplied to all of that, the x on the bottom is being added with the 5. So therefore, we cannot cancel. Looking over here, can I cancel the x plus 2 with the x plus 2? Uh, is the x plus 2 on top being multiplied to everything? It's been multiplied to 7x, it is. And is the x plus 2 on the bottom being multiplied to everything on the bottom? It's being multiplied uh, to x plus 3 in brackets as well. So yes, that can be cancelled. And lastly, can I cancel this x on top with this x on the bottom? And the answer is no. And why not? Because, of course, this x on top is being added to the 2 whereas the x on the bottom also in the brackets is being added on the 4. So there's nothing being multiplied either on the top and the bottom, so we definitely can't cancel the x's there. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. And we're asked to simplify this algebraic fraction. So the first thing you need to do is factorise anything you can factorise, and then the second thing we'll look to do is cancel anything that we can cancel. So I'm going to take a look at the top first. And factorising 2x minus 6, I can pull out the 2, it's a common terms type, and I'd need to multiply by an x, and then a minus 3 in order to get 2x minus 6 back. I'm then going to have a look at the denominator, and the denominator is my uh, factorising type 4, which is the quadratic trinomial. So I'll do my steps. First number by last number is 1 times minus 12, which is minus 12, and I want factors of this to make a plus 1. So um, that would be 3 and 4, and to make a plus 1, it would have to be a minus 3 and a plus 4. Um, and of course, it's one of my easier quadratic types, so I'm going to jump straight to my last step. x by x, of course, gives me the x squared, and minus 3 in one bracket and plus 4 in the other. Minus 3 times plus 4 gives me a minus 12, and minus 3 and 4 gives me, of course, a plus 1. So now I'm going to come back and instead of 2x minus 3, I'm going to write my factorised version of it. That was it on the top. And instead of x squared plus x minus 12, I'm going to write my factorised version on the bottom. And now I'm going to see what I can cancel. And I have x minus 3 on the top being multiplied to everything and x minus 3 being multiplied to everything on the bottom, which leaves 2 on top and x plus 4 on the bottom. And that is my answer. Okay, so try this question. So looking to factorise on the top, well, a squared minus 16. Pause the video if you th think you can do this one yourselves, otherwise listen along. a squared minus 16 is the difference of two squares. So we would have a minus 4 in one bracket, a plus 4 in the other. And on the bottom then we have 3a minus 12. Uh, this would be the common terms type of factorising. I can pull out the 3 and I need an a minus 4 in the brackets. So instead of a squared minus 16 on the top, I'm now going to write a minus 4 and a plus 4. And instead of 3a minus 12 on the bottom, I'm going to write 3 bracket a minus 4. And that will cancel with that uh, because it's multiplied to everything on the top and a minus 4 has been multiplied to everything on the bottom. So I'm left with a plus 4 over 3. And that is my answer. Okay, so let's try this one. Pause the video and see how you get on with this. So we're going to factorise, and the first one is uh, type 4, your trinomial quadratic. So we will apply our four-step method. 
First step is the first number by the last number, so 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. I want factors of minus 8 to make a, a minus 7, to add or subtract to make a minus 7. So um, we could have 8 times 1, and it would have to be minus 8 and plus 1. Minus 8 times plus 1 would make a minus 8, and minus 8 add 1 would make a minus 7. So rewrite the quadratic. And instead of the middle term, we're going to break it apart into minus 8x plus 1x minus 2. And then we're going to split and factorize. So common to 4x squared minus 8x, I can pull out a 4 and an x. We need to multiply by x to the 4x to get 4x squared back. And a minus 2 to the 4x to get minus 8x back. And then what's common to x minus 2, I could pull out a 1. I know this bracket should be the same. So the sign here would have to be a plus. Plus 1 times x is x, and 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. So we have 4x plus 1 in one bracket and x minus 2 in the other. And then factorizing this, it's a common terms type. So 4x squared minus 8x, I can pull out both a 4 and an x. And then I'd multiply by an x to get 4x squared back again and minus 2 to get an 8x back again. Okay, so now instead of this, we're going to put the factorized version on top now. And instead of the denominator 4x squared minus 8x, we'll put the factorized version on the bottom. And then we can cancel x minus 2 with x minus 2 because it's been multiplied to everything on the top and it's been multiplied to everything on the bottom. And I'm left with 4x plus 1 over 4x. Can I cancel the 4x's now? And the answer, of course, is no, because that 4x is being added to the 1 on top. Uh, it's not being multiplied to everything on the top, so that is your final answer.